Hey everyone, welcome to Ask Me Monday number 40. I am Vicki Hell. This is a weekly feed that where I go over some form of demo, crafty demo. I'm also open to live Q&A for anything that has to do with knitting, crochet, crafting, creative business, life balance. I'm here for you, whatever. We just hang out every Monday at this time. So I'm really happy uh, to be here with you. And please, if you are into these videos, please share, tell your friends. Um, people really respond when they hear stuff that, um, when they hear from their friends about things that they like. So thank you. Um, this week's episode is brought to you by Makers Mercantile. I don't know if you've checked out makersmercantile.com yet, but um, it's this really great site where you can buy anything that you need for pretty much any textile craft, sewing, knitting, crochet, weaving, needlepoint. They also have dyeing stuff and tons of great gifts. And um, it's just really a cool space. They also have a physical space just outside of um, Seattle, Washington, too, if you live in that neck of the woods. But they are the reason that I can be here today. So I'm super thankful to them. And we're going to be offering a discount on what I'm going to be demoing today. And I'll tell you about that in a little while. But I thought today I would start off so that I don't forget about it um, with a question since this is a live Q&A as well as a demo. So today's question comes from Bertie Rittenberg. She um, asked, what is felting and how can I do it with crochet? So probably all of us here have accidentally put a wool sweater in the washer and dryer and what was like a lovely drapey fit thing comes out and it looks maybe like a pot holder, right? It totally shrank. Well, the process that made that happen is called felting and it's used a lot um, a little bit in weaving, but really a lot in knitting and crochet to create a really dense, thick fabric. So what that means is that if you use um, any form of wool or animal fiber, it's really uh, important that it's a it's a natural animal fiber. It won't work very well if you use it won't work at all if you use acrylic. But if you use a blend that has a little bit of it, you aren't going to see the same results. So what happens is felting is the process of agitation. Heat and agitation and water make the um, the weave of the fiber with, that you've knit or crocheted shrink and become stiffer. So those holes that you see, even if they're really tiny and like a knit fiber or crocheted fiber, would meld together to create a thicker, uh, a thicker sort of denser fabric. It also shrinks it. It's not an exact science, but it's about 30% give or take shrinkage. The other thing to know is that if you, the larger the gaps are, so let's say you use a sport weight um, wool, if you use like say a size 15 or 17 or 35, the larger the gap of the holes, the more shrinkage and the more felting there is, which makes sense, right? Because there's more room to shrink in. Um, you can, there, there is a stopping point, right? So if you want, um, you can, it's really fun to play around. It's also a great experiment to do with your kids on percentages, um, a mathy experiment. In theory, I've done this with my children, but... I have not yet, <laughs> but it's a great, but it's really cool to see how there's different percentages based on which needle and hook you use. Now, so uh, Bertie asked about um, crochet and felting. The process for felting in general is the same. You can either do it by hand or by machine. By hand, you would use hot water, as hot as your hands can stand, and just a little bit of mild soap, either a soap like a mild wool wash, or you could also use like a baby shampoo, and you want to agitate it. It's the agitation that really gets the fibers going. And it takes a little bit of elbow grease, like you really wanna get going. And you'll see it, dip it, see it, and you can see, you can watch it happening before your eyes. Some of you may have seen me do this on um, the Hallmark Channel a couple years ago, maybe last year, um, during Christmas time, where I just took actual roving that was not sewn, or excuse me, not knit, and just rolled it into ball to felt it into the little balls. It's the exact same process, only you wouldn't roll it. You can also machine felt. If you do that, you want like a pillowcase or one of those like zipper um, lingerie bags, and you'd put your garment in there and you'd set the, um, you put it in the washer. There's less control with this, and it doesn't work with the front loading washers. It has to be the top loading ones. Um, I don't, I don't love doing it this way just because you can't watch how it's shrinking and also, it, 
sometimes with the top loading, I feel like it stretches and, and wrings it out. Not to say it doesn't work. I just prefer doing it by hand. So crochet will uh, works the same as knitting, as I said, but the crochet stitch is actually much denser than a knit stitch. So a knit stitch are, you know, loops laying over loops, right? Crochet stitch, so that gives like a flat fabric. A crochet st stitch is kind of knots created. Um, and so it's going to be thicker. So it'll take a little bit more work to get them to meld together. But the same process, um, if you want to see really nice results, I would go up at least two hook sizes to what the recommendation is, maybe even more and just experiment. And I thought because um, seemingly the entire Western world uh, went out and bought the new Harry Potter play yesterday, I thought that I'd bring out a some felted projects um, that were from my very first book, uh, new knits on the block and these are felted wizard well and princess hats and they were designed by the lovely Bev Galeskis. She really um, really brought felting out to knitters in a big way. She's the reason she wrote a book about it oh gosh it's been at least 10 years ago about felting and it really kicked off the love of felting and really kind of a phenomenon for a while everything was felted. She unfortunately passed away a few years back but she just was such a great person um, and so smart. So this is a um, this is a felted wizard hat and the book I don't think exists anymore but I might pull out the the pattern and maybe just put it up on Ravelry if you want. But these were they these were knitted in the round and then you can see you can't even tell they were knitted at all. It just looks like this really thick fabric. And then it was needle felted with roving, which I've demoed on this stream before, um, just right into the fabric. So I hope that that um, answers your question, Birdie, about felting. And now I think we should move on to our demo. All right, so the folks at Makers Mercantile were kind enough to send me a Zoom loom. I don't know if you've been trolling the annals of uh, Pinterest lately, but weaving just in general is hot, whether it's for, you know, wall hangings or, you know, scarves. And there's all kinds of different forms of weaving, you know, on big looms or just on tabletop looms. And this is actually a um, portable on the go loom. It's a loom not a womb. Um, it's a loom. So you can take it everywhere. And I actually have been taking it a lot of places lately. So I can testify to that. This um, is just like an old school pin loom that's been reworked. And it was actually um, a designer named John Malarkey um, teamed up with them and created this really cool portable loom. Um, and because I only have one of them, I'm going to be kind of teaching you in reverse. I'm going to start with the end and then move to the beginning, uh, just because you don't want to sit here and watch me do the entire process for 15 minutes. Um, but I'm going to go over how you um, set it up and get your piece off. The cool thing about this is this little loom creates these little four inch pieces of goodness, of yarny goodness. And right up, like these these would be really great coasters or just adorable tiny little doll blankets. This was my kind of first foray into it. Um, this was a mess up where I pulled something too tight afterwards. So I was like, put some, put some fringe on it. Put some fringe on it. That's gonna, gonna be my new life adage. Something's messed up, put some fringe on it. Kind of like put a bird on it, but fringier. So I'm gonna be showing you how to do this. This is a great, uh, tool for embellishing things. I think that these would be the most adorable little elbow patches like on a little sweater or blazer. Um, I'm going to cut out some jeans. Uh, my friend Jennifer Perkins suggested that I put it through some jeans through a hole. And I'd actually done some darning on a pair of jeans that looks exactly like this um, already. So I might take the same pair and sort of like add this as a, um, um, you know, extra embellishment. The really cool thing is, is that it's great for just scraps. It only takes eight yards of yarn to make one of these little squares. And to give you an idea, the average kind of sport weight, worst weight yarn comes in a ball of um, around 100 yards. I mean, give or take. But you can see how many of those squares that you could get out of just one ball. So if you have a bunch of scraps left over from other, um, from other projects, then why not weave it? Plus it's super fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do our little flipper rooney of, um, of the camera so that I can show you a demo. Um, the kit, when you buy a zoom loom, it comes with 
everything that you need. I don't know if I have everything here with me. I should, yeah. It comes with a booklet with instructions. And I have to say that the instructions are really clear, really clear. I was actually surprised because usually it's kind of like, it's almost like when you open Ikea furniture and you're like, I don't know what you're saying with your mouth and your words. Uh, this was super clear. So it comes with that. It comes with the loom, obviously. It comes with this like big mamma jamma needle for weaving. Um, it comes with a little needle for weaving and ends. So everything that you need. Um, and then you, so you just have to add yarn, just add yarn. All right, I am going to flip the camera around and show you how this works. This is always the part that I dread most because someday kids are gonna be laughing at this because they're gonna be able to have like an actual, they're gonna be like a multi-camera phone shoot action. We are not there yet with the Facebook Live. All right, ready? I'm doing it. And we're going. Okay. So this is loom. And I have already worked most of a piece on it. I did this up last night. I spoke on Instagram to the original designer of this loom, um, John, as I mentioned yesterday, and he said that one of his favorite things about it is that you can really see how the variegated yarn looks different than if it was knitted. It's really fun to play with colors and stuff. And it, and it is, you get a totally different effect. I'm trying to get as much light for you as possible. Um, Michelle wants to know if it's large enough for pockets. Um, it is large enough for pockets on a, I would say up to a, women's extra small sweater. They're about four by four inches. So um, it could absolutely work. And I think it would be super adorable on the front of, on the front of like a empire waist or like a, a smock looking dress for a little girl. It would be so cute. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the end and then later I'll show you the beginning. So this is a piece that's been fully, Kathleen, yes, you do need this in, in your life. Oh, and guess what? Maker's Mercantile is going to give you 20% off if you use the code ASKMEMONDAY from this very loom. So that saves a ton of money. It, it retails for 40 bucks, so 20% off is, is nothing to sneeze at, let me tell you. All right, so I'm just going to show you how to do the actual weaving here, and we'll talk about setting it up in, the, in a second. So to weave, all you do is you're going to go over the loop that's wrapped around these pins, and I'll, again, I'll show you how to do that later. And all you're gonna do is then go under and over. Under. I just realized I need to push that down. Oh, this is the other thing. So you can use your needle to push down. I realized that my last, I wove right here. So that means that the one that's already wound on the, um, or already loaded onto the loom, needs to be pushed down. I know that because if I was gonna go over, start with over, the, the threads would have looked exactly the same. So I saw that, oops, I need to back out. I love teaching moments like Go over and then under. And that's all you do all the way across. Under, over, under, over. And you would just do this all the way across and pull it through. And as you get closer to the top, to finishing, it gets a little tighter because you've created all this really firm fabric. So you kind of have to um, muscle it just a, the tiniest of bits. And then you pull it through. And you want to take note that when you pull it through, you won't be able to pull it. Can you see how the eye of it won't slide? You have to make sure to turn it just ever so slightly so that the eye is at its narrowest point and then you pull it through. Oh, Renee said she almost missed this. No worries, you can always watch this. I put this feed up um, in my videos playlist. You can go to facebook.com slash Vicki Howell and click under videos and you can watch these anytime. So anyways, you're gonna keep doing that. You would, you would come back over this last one. 
the same thing, weaving in and out, and that's all there is to it. Then you would weave in the ends in the same manner, only I would use the shorter needle. Um, I would go under the back and maybe go under two threads at a time. Do you know what I mean? Let me show you. If I were in the back, let's just pretend that I'm done. I would just kind of weave in, but with the smaller needle. I'd kind of go through, weave them in, and then um, cut it off. And then I'm gonna I wanted to show you this part before we actually like load the piece. All you do is pop it off. Now ignore that part because I didn't finish it. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Like there's no weird finishing you have to do on the sides. There's no I was envisioning all of these ends that I would have to weave in, like on traditional weaving. Um, I just love it. It's so easy and so fun. It takes about 15 minutes to do an entire piece. That's it. And what's really cool before I get this before I show you how to set it up. The way that they design this is that it's rounded down here so that you can manipulate the needle to go under the fabric. So that with the dip of the fabric or the um, moldability of the fabric, um, your needle doesn't get stuck right there. It really helps a lot. So that's a really great um, design feature. So good job. Good job, Shaft and Zoom Loom and John and everyone. Woo! All right, now I'm gonna show you Let's stop, rewind, that was, those were my rewind hands. Stop, rewind, and talk about how to get set up. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take a yarn, and you can use, you can use any way up to, definitely up to a worsted. I haven't tried the chunkiers. I think that you could probably get away with a chunky, I just haven't tried it. So I'm gonna just say, for now, up to that. You wanna leave about a five or six inch tail. I'm frankly am not measuring it. It's just for you to be able to weave in ends. And you wanna stick it in that little notch right there. And that just holds it secure. All right, let me see if I can get into a place. All right, so you're gonna come up, Come around these first two pet pins and then down. Hold on, I'm moving this one over here. That first, you want that first one to be flush with the side. Come on down. Okay, I'm noticing that this white yarn is not showing on the white, so I'm gonna do this again with the blue. Thank you for your patience, I appreciate it. I just think this is gonna be better for you guys. Okay. So I've got my tail, I'm coming up, around the first two pins, and then I wanna come through. This very first little batch of pins has four, it's the only time that's like that because it's on the corner. So this time you'll come through the middle of the two, but then it changes. Yeah, I also, that's the reason I, you know I normally have a white background for you for my demos, but because of the white loom I changed, changed it up a bit, hopefully it would help. Okay, so then you're gonna come up and you're gonna come through again, the last two pins, or not again, this time the last two pins, and from now on, all the way across the last two pins. Okay, so you notice, oops, that I'm taking my finger and kind of making it taut for two reasons. It'll help it not get too tight, and also it helps it not fly off the loom. Does anybody have any questions so far? I say I gotta try and read and then also wind at the same time. We'll see how that goes. Ashley says she loves the yarn. It's really nice. I think, um, I just bought this at Hill Country Weavers here in Austin. I think it's, uh, Dream, Dream and Color, Calm maybe? Okay, so now we're done with this very first side. So what we wanna do is we wanna rotate it now. Oops. Come around, do a little loop-de-loop. So let me see if I can get closer for you. loop de loo turn it, rotate it this way, and now we're gonna repeat that whole process. The cool thing about this is that 
while you're winding, you're kind of doing half the weaving work for you. This takes care of a lot of the cross gritting, or the cross hatching later. Again, we're going with these with the last two or the top, depending on how you want to say it, pins. Uh, let's see, wait, who just asked that? Ashley wanted to know what the first yarn I was going to use was. I just realized that while turning, well, I'll fix that in a second. Um, it was Madeline Tosh Sport, maybe? And it was in Holly Festival. Okay, so I'm going to just keep going. Now you can see how there's this gap here. It accidentally came off the two pins. No big deal. I'm going to do not the best for camera, but I'm going to do a quick fix where I slide it back, make sure it's on the two pins. See, no big deal. That was so easy. Okay. And then you're going to keep going all the way to the end. Um, somebody just asked and the name went too fast for me to see it. Does it matter which way that you turn? You're supposed to turn in the way that benefits your dominant hand. So as long as you get it on in this manner, no, I don't believe it would. If you were left-handed, it would probably make sense to do it in the opposite direction. Okay, now there's a third layer. Where was I going with this? There's a third layer, so we have to turn it again. This is when we do that little loop-de-loop -loop again. Now, this time what we're doing is we want to create another cross hatch. So you see we've got this great cross, cross hatch already. It's a grid. But now we want there to be threads or yarn in between. We're creating the last layer. So there's three layers of this winding process. Okay, so we're going to go up and come through that middle one. And now, instead of going through the last or the top two, we're going to go around the first two. So you'll start where there's on the empty pin each time. And I promise you that this, this is easier when you're not also over a camera. And you can tell that you're doing right if you see that your new strands of yarn, that third layer, are in between the other strands. Okay, and then you just keep continuing. Denise is saying that she's using a light worsted on hers. And she's also done double strands. Um, there's another, you can also use any kind of yarn that you'd like. Obviously like a cotton isn't gonna stretch as much, so you might have to muscle it a little more. This wool is really great for it. Um, you want to make sure not to pull too height, tight. You don't want to be pulling, you know, bending the pins. And that's why doing the little, the little fancy finger action, whatever you want to call it, where you kind of pinch and go, helps that a lot. Home stretch, people, home stretch. Thanks for hanging in here with me. Okay. So then you're all the way back down to number two. And you can also see there's like, there's all these little um, arrows for you as a guide. So from here, the very last step before you get started weaving is that you want to, so you have three layers, right? So you, there's three total layers that you're actually loading up your loom with. So now we're done with that. And now we want to get the, our yarn ready for weaving. So you can do, you, it's really great because they've figured out the exact amount that you need. Now, if you wanted to use a different yarn, you could do that as well. This is if you're using the same yarn. All you do is you wrap it around, all the way around the loom five times. That was three, four, five. And then you take your Barb says that there's a Facebook group called Frame Loomers with ideas and patterns, so that's great. 
Also with the Zoom Loom, you get a, there are three patterns in the same book, and I'm gonna actually pattern or another project that the Zoom Loom people sent me um, for this really great shawl that I'll show you later, and I believe it's a free pattern. So then I'm gonna just thread this, the big Mamma Jamma needle that I showed you earlier, and you're ready to go, that's it. And then you would just proceed as I showed you before, going over that first loop, under, over, under, all the way across in that manner, and you would just pull through. It could not be easier and so fun. And I have to say, um, really, really kind of I'm, ah, messy, messy office view. Um, I'm really actually <laughs> kind of super excited about what I can do with these um, just for um, embellishing stuff. Let me get this set up again. Okay, so you see behind me the shawl. This was sent by Ooh, that is not a good view. This is when you gotta lower the camera. This was sent um, by the Zoom Loom people um, and the Shack uh, Spindle people. And this is a scarf. Can you see it? I'm kind of too close for you to see it. I'm about to screw up my mic so I won't say anything. So there's this really cool easy to make shawl. And the pattern is now gonna be on the Maker's Mercantile blog, I believe. So if you go to make makersmercantile.com, click on blog, you'll be able to get the pattern for it. So this is just a bunch of squares, and then they've been crocheted together, and then they've done the net stitch as a border. So you can go ahead and get that. It's really lightweight. This would be a really sweet baby blanket idea too. You can use them, like I said, as like coasters, which would be just this sort of cutest little new home gift or host gift um, or peekaboo through you know the Alabama Shannon stuff that's really um, popular right now where she cuts out shapes with fabric and then you embroider over you could do that but this could be your peekaboo uh, it would be really great as a table runner you could do many art pieces not suggesting this is an art piece but in general it would be really cute to do the, do sweet little pieces where you maybe weave in tinsel or different, you know, found things, fibers and that kind of thing, and just hang them, why not? Super cute cards too, if you wanted to just sew this onto a card. Um, so much fun that you can do. So if you go to makersmercantile.com and you get one, um, it has to be, you have to do it before the fifth though, so that's only five days. They will give you 20% off the Zoom Loom. Just use the code ASKMEMONDAY. Okay, um, I think that's it for, for our demos today and our main questions. Uh, the only other things that I wanted to share with you is that I am actually speaking at the Texas Pinners Conference, so all you uh, Pinterest lovers that live in Texas, in the Dallas area in September. If you go to pinnersconference.com, uh, I, I believe is the URL, just click on Texas and you can see and sign up. I'm going to be t um, doing a lecture about why making matters and also teaching some really fun like arm knit necklaces. So, um, and if you use the code Vicki Howell, just my name, um, they'll give you 10% off of Marketplace and everything. Next up is Craftish, my podcast. If you haven't subscribed to that on iTunes or Stitchers or SoundCloud, please do. It's my passion project. I get to talk to creative people from all walks of life in hopes of inspiring all of you to create and talk about um, how important being creative is, uh, not, for, not only for your soul, but uh, for our society. So check that out. Uh, we are now on a new day. It starts on Thursday now. And this week I'm going to be speaking with I'm a groomy designer, um, sort of like the adorable, quirky crocheter and lifestyle blogger, Twinkie Chan. So uh, tune in on Thursday for that. And I think that's really it. Um, thank you so much for being here. Please, please, please share with me if you get this loom and you make any pieces, I wanna see what you do with them. Just tag at Vicki Howell, tag at Makers Mercantile. Um, we love to see, I love to see when people are really making uh, stuff that we talk about here. I will be back here next week as always. If you enjoy this feed, please tell a friend. And till the next time, have a lovely creative week. Bye. <laughs>